Hey everybody, good morning. Welcome to the Morning Devo with Bowo. It's May 30th, 2022 and uh, good to be in the in the house this week and good to uh, get online and uh, get into the word with you all. It's, and it's great, uh, super grateful to see you guys in the comment corner already. Kurt, good morning friend. Uh, Paula, great morning. And uh, and she really gave me a bundle of encouragement the other day at church, which was awesome. And Bob's in the house this morning and so grateful for him as well. Uh, wonderful giver, uh, wonderful brother in Christ. And thank you that we can be praying for one another and lifting one another up. Um, that's what the body of Christ is about. And so these devos are me doing a devo in the morning and I uh, share that with you. So that you can join along to learn the Bible as you do it. If you've never gone through the Bible, uh, you get to go through the Bible with me, and which is awesome. And we're in the book of Deuteronomy right now. We're in a pretty cool section, actually, 18b. And uh, thank you, Kurt. Uh, glad you're praying for me, buddy. That's awesome. Um, but in 18b of Deuteronomy... Um, if you have your Bibles, you certainly can open them there. You can always check out the archives of the Devos at my YouTube channel, at Bo Ouellette. And uh, we have a ton of, just a bunch of devotions there. Uh, and they're all by book. They're all listed by book, too. So if you have a book that you want to go through, you can always just go to that book and go through it. So here uh, I find myself this morning in Deuteronomy 18, verse 15. And it says, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me. So this is Moses speaking. And he's speaking, member to the children of Israel before they cross the Jordan and go into the promised land. And so it says, hey, it's a promise, right? God's going to raise up someone for you. And it's going to be a prophet like me from your midst, from your brethren. So what a cool, what a cool promise, right? Hey, God's going to raise someone up from your own brethren and he's going to be a prophet like me. Now, I, I, I like to sometimes share how to do a cool Bible study with you guys too um, that might really help you as we go through the devotions. And that is um, sometimes you can go to uh, a web page like uh, Blue Letter Bible and Blue Letter Bible allows you to type in uh, do like a word search where you can type in like a word like Moses and and then and then when you kind of scroll through that page you'll find that it'll show the different references to the word Moses by the book of the Bible 
So you could see like maybe there's 13 references in the book of John or nine references in the book of Mark or but it'll show you how many times that word Moses is used um, elsewhere throughout the Bible. And the whole point of it is that Moses is a pretty, pretty popular guy and throughout the scriptures, throughout all the Bible. <clears throat> and uh, he's quite the figure. And the reason why I think it's always good to do some uh, like a word search like that with a with a name like Moses, a very popular name, is you really can see Jesus and how Jesus talks about Moses. Um, and you could see how Jesus saw himself as this prophet that would come after Moses and be uh, uh, and come from the people to uh, give spiritual guidance to the people. And, uh, and so, like, when you look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, what we call the Gospels, and you look up Moses, and you look at how Jesus spoke of Moses, you're going to see a lot of cool references. And one of them will be, just like, just like what we're reading right here, that there will be someone, a prophet like me, from among your midst, from your brethren. So this is a passage that really points us to Jesus because Jesus, you know, talks about Moses and he talks about uh, Jesus's uh, fulfillment of this passage. And so, you know, that's just a little side note for you, something you can do on your own, you know. But uh, so this 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 is a prophetic passage. It's something that speaks to the future. So it gives some hope too, like, hey, there's going to be some guidance in your life about Israel, like in your future. Um, <clears throat> you know, what's life like when you don't have any good guidance, when you don't have, you know, a prophetic message, you know, you don't have something that's giving you hope for the future. Uh, you don't have, you don't have that good leadership, you know, um, and this is what is being promised to Israel, which is pretty awesome because you think of how daunting of a task it would be to be on one side of the Jordan knowing you're going to cross and then you're going to face adversity. And whenever we face adversity, which we all do, we all face challenges in life and difficulties and letdowns and everything that comes our way. You know, what, what is the message that I hear during adversity? Who am I listening to when the trials come? Well, I want to listen to the, to the prophet. I want to listen to the one who is close to God, the one that knows God. You know, I want to listen to that message. And that message is going to give me hope. It's going to give me strength. It's going to give me power. It's going to give me positivity. And that's what I want to listen to. That's what I want to hear. There's many people that want to get in my ear. But the question is, is who am I going to listen to? You know, so when adversity's going to come, it's going to happen. It's inevitable. You got to cross the Jordan. You got to get to the other side and there's going to be the enemies there. You know, whenever you face that adversity, you know, hey, what are you listening to? And I see that as a, a good, if you will, principle in the Devo is, hey, what am I listening to when I'm going to cross that Jordan, when the trial's going to come? So it says, him you shall hear according to all the desires of the Lord your God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, nor let me see this great fire anymore, lest I die. So, the, so it just gives us a little understanding that it's going to be, uh, they are going to um, hear. Uh, they will come to a place, Israel will come to a place where they finally will hear their their in a sense their their the right voice they finally will grab a hold of this right voice now i love as a cross reference to this section isaiah chapter 30. what a passage about how we listen to so many other voices we listen to egypt and that's what israel does they listen to egypt they want to go back to egypt right we always get that in this narrative they always want to go back they're listening to the voices in egypt right um they're listening to their own counsel instead of the counsel of god 
And But then there's this light at the end of the tunnel in, in Isaiah 30, midstream of the passage of that chapter, which talks about how one day they will finally listen. They will listen to the voice of God. And here that is a very similar kind of idea, right? This prophet you'll listen to, right? Um, and, uh, and that kind of idea. So in verse 17, it says, And the Lord said to me, what they have spoken is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brethren and will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And it shall be that whomever will not hear my words, which he speaks in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. So it's a warning, too. Hey, it says, hey, there's going to be a prophet. You need to listen to him. He's going to speak in my name. You need to pay attention. But there's going to be other voices, other, in a sense, prophets, uh, you know, that are speaking, if you will, the will of God to you, saying it's the will of God when it's not really the will of God, you know, for you. And uh, I think there's many of, of those voices that are in our world today, you know, kind of that false prophetic voice, that voice that seems to want to speak, you know, kind of um, words to me. Um, but it's not really, it's not the correct word. Um, it's not from God. And um, it's, it's, you know, from another source. And um, there's many people like that. So, and I think you could think through them as Bob is right now in the comment corner. <laughs> and he's, he's typing some of those out. Yeah, so there's many voices that want to tell you about the things of God, but they're not of God. They're not, and like you might go like, well, how, Bo, how do you know that? How do you know which one's from God and which one's not? Well, there's a good answer for that. And that is, you know, it's going to line up with God's word. So if someone's telling me something, but it's not lining up with the word that I'm reading, you know, the scriptures that I'm, that I'm looking at, then I have to be able to say, hmm, that doesn't sound like it's a right word, you know, that's false. So there, you know, we have to look at what our leaders are saying, what, you know, and if they're really of God or they really aren't, right? The prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, they presume, help me not be presumptuous today. That's a good kind of idea to think about, right? In the morning not presume, not be presumptuous, um, uh, you know, um, let me be someone who's not so presumptuous in my life, but let me instead, you know, walk very intentionally. And, um, and here a prophet speaks presumptuously in God's name. It says, God says, hey, I haven't even commanded him to share. So that's the person that you don't listen to at all. Um, and it says that if you say in your heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has spoken or not? How do you know? It says when a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not happen or come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken presumptuously, right? On his own. And you shall not be afraid of them. Okay, so the test of the prophet in this passage is pretty simple. It's one that says, hey, if the prophet has said something, the person who deems to be a prophet, and it comes to pass, then that's obviously a prophet of the Lord. But if it hasn't come to pass, then they spoke presumptuously. They just said it, right? They presuming. Oh, yeah, I presume God's on my side. I'm going to say it, you know, when they really don't know. And uh, again, they're acting presumptuously. They're not taking a step back, maybe walking a little humbly, right? Instead of so presumptuous in their life. And sometimes it's good to just walk humbly, right? And to not be so presumptuous. Um, but have a, uh, a good check, 
you know, <laughs> in you uh, of, hey, is this the right thing to do? Is not, is this the right thing to do? You know, but have that check system within your heart. Um, and uh, I kind of like that idea too in the, in the, in the chapter, right? Is to not be presumptuous. So that's something we can work on in our life is not being so presumptuous uh, to be someone who takes a step back, rethink something, you know, to think through it a little more before we act, um, before we say that, um, and, uh, before, and that's how it was, uh, that's what was being spoken to Israel is like, Hey, when, you know, leadership's important, you're going to have a leader that's going to come on the scene and you're going to go through trials and you're going to need leadership. And I hope you guys have good leadership when you go through trials, like, you know, who's your master? Who are you listening to? Things like that. And, uh, you know, and, but it's a lot of, there's a, you know, Israel must have needed this kind of hope, obviously. They must have needed this idea that, hey, there was going to be someone who's going to spiritually help them and spiritually lead the nation. Um, And here you get these good directions of like, hey, this is what you're to look out for. And this is what you're to pay attention for. So a lot of discernment, right? A lot of a lot of ideas too that, you know, we need to have discernment as people. And when someone says something like, hey, I am of God, or, you know, this is what God says, or, um, you know, maybe it's it's not. Someone came up to me at church the other day and they said, hey, Bo, um, uh, a, 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 I was listening to a preacher on TV and, and all of a sudden my, you know, of course my antennas get up, you know, at that moment. And they said, you know, the preacher was screaming and screaming about, uh, uh, this, you know, about Satan and different things and just screaming and screaming. And I, and, and, and she, then this lady asked me, do I, do I have a demon in me? And, and I was just like really blown away by the question in a way, like, what, like, you, do you have a demon in you? <laughs> like, you know, where did you get that? But the way the person was preaching obviously was very emotional and very over the top. And it was just that really emotional screaming type of preaching that was being described. And, and it really scared her. And, and she didn't understand what the preacher was saying. And it ended, she ended up walking away from it with a really interesting interpretation. Um, you know, a really weird, biblically, um, inaccurate idea. And, um, and, and that's unfortunate, um, you know, but we need to be discerning people that whoever we're listening to, uh, you know, any preachers or anybody like that, we have to be able to discern what they're saying and say, hey, is what they're saying in the word of God or is it not? Are they just speaking presumptuously? So when someone says, hey, I was, uh, you know, I woke up the other day and the Lord told me, well, is it really the Lord that told you or is it you that told you? You know, are you speaking presumptuously there? Maybe you need to take a check and just take a step back before you say, hey, the Lord said to me, maybe you take, take that step back and say, hey, did the Lord really say this, you know, to me? Or do I just think the Lord said this to me? Like, is, is what is being, is what I'm communicating in the name of the Lord, does that line up with what the actual Bible says, you know, if it lines up with what the Bible says, then yeah, it sounds like that's the Lord for sure. Because God ain't going to contradict his word, you know. But if what you're saying is like, oh yeah, the Lord said to me, da 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 and it's something that's not, not in the word. It's like, it's not something that you see the principles in the word of God. Then I would be like, mm, I don't know if that's the word, man. I think you're speaking presumptuously there. But you can see how we need to use that discernment in our life daily be people that uh are 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 very um in a sense keen to discernment and when it comes to that spiritual leadership you know that is around us or that we're listening to so we live in a day and age where there's a lot of different mediums uh in the sense of a lot of di- our media i should say not mediums per se but media and you know where we can tap into many different messages 
um, whether it's here on this kind of platform or whether it's on uh, radio or whether it's on TV and we can listen to a lot of a lot of Bible teaching and that's and there's a lot of beauty to that uh, for sure but we don't have we don't check our minds out and I would never want you guys to check your mind out when you listen to me either but we we have to be engaged and we have to be like hey what is being communicated and and that's the idea I mean, it's a great promise to have a prophet like Moses on the scene. And uh, just so you guys get an idea of, you know, some of the things that are said about Moses just in the book of John. It says uh, in John 1 17, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus. Again, that Moses Jesus kind of comparison there. And it says, uh, John 1 45 says, Philip finds Nathanael and says to him, we have found him whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write. So Moses wrote about Jesus. In John 3, 14, it says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so even the son of man must be lifted up. So just as Moses did things uh, in the spiritual life for Israel, so Jesus is going to be even greater of a, a, have a spiritual influence in our lives and in Israel's life as well. Um, you know, so um, John five forty six. if you had believed Moses, you would have believed me for he wrote of me. Um, John six thirty two. then Jesus said to them, verily, verily, I say to you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my father giveth you the true bread from heaven. You know, Moses, yeah, yeah, he saw the bread from heaven, but I got something even greater, even better. You know, so you can see that there's a lot of uh, the word Moses, like I mentioned to you, being used in the Gospels with Jesus. And that's really neat. You guys can look at that and compare that. So it's kind of a good devo, right? Just to remember the wonderful prophetic promise that they would have a, a prophet, <clears throat> someone to lead them spiritually. Um, the office of prophet to the nation of Israel. And uh, this is one that one day they will listen to, they will hear. And, uh, and then there's some good instruction for us, you know, to pay attention, to be aware, to um, discern, and, and not be presumptuous in our own spiritual lives and the way we talk either. You know, God help us not to be that way. You know, so the way we we don't be that way is we take a step back, we compare things to the Word of God, and we go, hey, is this really in the Word of God? What I'm thinking or what, you know, that kind of idea. So, hey, good Devo, help us not be presumptuous today. Help us to stick to your Word and help us to listen to good leadership. And by golly, if you don't know what to do, I mean, let's just go back to what Jesus talked about. You know, let's go back to his words and you can't go wrong there. Right. And so we keep it simple in that way. So you guys have a good day. Okay. Take care. Bye bye.